Hi guys, I hope you're doing well today. Um, today we're going to go and look around the online Glasgow Museums collection. So that's where they've photographed most of the stuff they've got in the museum and you can go and have a look at it um, through their website. So I've put the link to their website in the little description bit down there. So if you want to go down and click on there, when you get to that page, there's four options um, of what kind of genre you can look at. Um, there's art and design, human history, transport and technology, and natural history. So have a wee look through, have a wee explore of those, um, see what see what interests you, um, and then we're gonna pick one to draw. So here's a few examples from the collection that I've picked out from each of the different sections just to show you what's available and um, the website itself is a bit confusing so don't worry if you kind of end up down a bit of a rabbit hole you can come back and click that original link again and just try and find your way through there's some really um if you click follow enough leads you can get to some really weird stuff and um, so it's worth really playing around with what you can find but um have a look at these things Alright, so you might have noticed that I look different um, in this little bit. Um, I'm filming this on a different day, so that's why. Um, I'm now going to share with you some of my favourite bits from the Borough Collection, which is my favourite museum ever. Um, mostly because that's where I learned to draw when I was like seven. I used to go to their Saturday morning art classes and I really enjoyed walking around the museum and drawing all the different stuff. I think I've drawn everything in there at least once. Um, it's also not too painful to think about at the moment because the borough collection is shut so even if I wanted to go right now I couldn't, it's not open. Um, my favourite thing about the borough collection is how much of it is glass so when you're looking at a lot of the artefacts you're in the woods um, and you can, there's a real change throughout the year and you, it's really seasonal, you get the beautiful colours of autumn and then the fresh colours of spring the lovely warm sun of summer and uh, kind of cool wintery frost which is a uh, really nice um, and I'm going to show you some of my favourite pieces. So a lot of that, um, apart from the nuns, who are just really cool, um, a lot of that was stoneware, um, a type of um, craft from the Tang Dynasty in China, um, and it's called Sankai ware, and it uses um, stoneware clay, which is a high fire clay, so it's very sturdy, um, with a white tin glaze and some um, chemicals called oxides, which are colouring pig pigments, and they use copper and... Ooh, iron, I think it's iron oxide, um, to get the green and the yellow. Um, it's also called egg and cabbage wear um, by people that are mean and have no poetry. Um, and it's some of my favourite stuff in the Borough Collection. And um, there's a really cool camel, um, which has also got that sort of style in it, but I couldn't find a picture. Um, but that's one of my favourites. Um, Oh, 
All right, so on to the important bit, the art. I'm going to draw the Tomb Guardians um, because they're doing this pose, um, showing they're really strong. And I don't know if you know, but I'm really strong. So I'm going to do that because I'm strong. So it's like it's me. Uh, you know how much I love a self-portrait. So we're going to gonna have a go at drawing that. Okay, so it doesn't matter what you're drawing. Um, I'm just going to talk you through the main stages of a drawing to make sure you're getting it well positioned on the page, getting in all the details you want without getting stuck a really fiddly bit. Um, so your first step, as always, is going to just be sketching the vague shape of what you're drawing. Um, you really want to make sure you've got it on the page where you want it, you want it in the middle, or you want to place it somewhere where you've thought about where you want it. You don't want to end up with you know, his head up here and then running out of space. So it's good to have a little sketch to plan your drawing. The next thing I've done is I've vaguely fleshed him out a bit. So I've kind of put in, chunked up his arms a bit, put a few more details in his face. I like to do this thing where I put a line through where his eyes would be and a line down where the middle of his face would be and I find that helps me get everything looking the right way. Um, chunked in his legs, I've put in some of the details of his armour that help me find the ways. Um, so what you're doing is you're putting in kind of big sections, um, a bit like you're putting in the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Um, I find that nice and easy but you're not going in and doing shading and pattern yet, if that makes sense. And then the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rubber, which is hiding from me, and with my rubber I'm going to rub out any of my sketch that I no longer need. So any lines that weren't quite in the right place or anything that's a bit confusing and I don't want in my final drawing, okay? Here's my beautiful guardian with all his confusing lines rubbed out. So I've just clarified a bit of what I've drawn, my initial sketch and just tweaked it a bit so it looks a bit more together and I've got rid of any extra lines that might get in the way of working out what I'm trying to do. The next stage is what I like to call refining and that's when we're tweaking our initial sketch and putting in some of the details that really stand out to us. So it's about picking about what you're drawing you really want to get in there because you can never get 100% of the detail of a drawing. A drawing is always an interpretation of what you've got in front of you. That's what makes it different from a photograph. A photograph generally captures everything, uh, whereas a drawing is really what you see put down on paper. So it's all about what you're observing, what's important to you, and that's why nobody's drawings are the same, because we all focus in on different things, we like to draw different things. So if you love doing loads of shading, you go in with that shading. If you want to keep it quite flat, you do that. If you want to go all out with the colour, that's up to you. And um, We're all going to create something that's unique to us and we don't necessarily want it to look exactly like the picture we're working from. So here's all the details that I've chosen to add. I've gone in with all the different bits that were kind of raised and lowered in this statue. Um, I've chosen to give it my face. Beautiful. Um, I've given it a nice big muscle with some lines coming out of it to emphasise that. And I've decided to put some writing in the background so it says power stance. Because um, this is my power stance. Um, so you can go for as little or as much detail as you like. I've missed out some bits. But I've kept in this little fish because I think he's real cute. Um, so go ahead, put as much as you'd like into your drawing, and then we're going to talk about colour and shading. So 
So if you're wanting to do some shading, um, I find the easiest way to do shading is if you do the thing where you screw up your eyes and you really squint at it like you hate it or you're really suspicious of your thing and um, the bits that are really dark, like if you do it right now, this side of my face is really dark, my eye sockets are the darkest bit on my face and my face that's the darkest bit so these are the darkest bits this is kind of my mo mostly dark but not the darkest and then this side of my face is a really nice light tone and that's um, how it's really easy to tell what tone to shade what bit um, in my picture I've used a dark green um, for my shading um, normally I like to use a deep blue um, but you can use a grey or a dark brown as well or even a dark purple if you want quite a funky funky picture um, so think about what colour would best suit your picture if you want to do some shading and do your squinty eyes and then just draw in what you're seeing This is my finished piece. Um, I've used watercolours, um, so I've got it done quite nice and quickly. Um, one thing I would say is if you um, going for a different piece from this one, you can rub out your pencil lines. I haven't rubbed them out because a lot of this piece is white, so I thought I'd leave them in for a bit of definition. Um, I hope you enjoy exploring the Glasgow Museum archives and finding something you want to draw or having a go at this bad boy or any of the other examples that I put in this video and um, it's really worth having a wee explore and see what's happening please ignore how messy my room is I'm quarantined I'm not tidying um, and I'll finish with a joke um, I went to a museum recently and I asked the invigilator can I take pictures and they said no they've got to stay on the walls <laughs> okay, um, I hope you're all doing alright. Um, go explore all the amazing museums online, and there's so much cool stuff in there um, that people have, you know, bought and blah, 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 words. Anyway, okay, you take care. Bye.